Hi all, in this one, take a look at writing this expression sine of 2 cosine inverse of x, just like that. So the first step is to realize the following, that when you say cosine inverse of x, it's really x over 1. That's important to see, because what that tells us, let's make this green, and the bottom will be, for example, brown, that based on this we can make a triangle that will really help us reason our way through simplifying this expression so it's only in terms of x and no sines or cosines. So first let's make a small triangle over here on the side, it looks like this. As you might know the cosine function relies on the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. So for example I'm going to call this the angle theta and then this essentially is x right here. That's x and the hypotenuse that's going to be our long side so I'm going to call that one right here. So where it says cosine inverse of x over 1, it's coming from a triangle similar to this one. Keep that in mind. Now based on this, let's find the missing side. So for now, let's see. I'm going to make that the yellow side. I'm talking about this side here, the yellow side. So that's the vertical leg. It's opposite that angle theta, in other words. And I can find it using the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to say the following. For now, I'm going to call this A. And that side will be useful in simplifying that expression. That's why I want to find it, to be clear. So I'm going to have a squared plus x squared equals 1 squared, Pythagorean theorem. Then this gives a squared plus x squared equals 1. Shift x squared over to the right side. We're solving for a, remember. So a squared equals 1 minus x squared. Next step, take square roots. So a equals the square root of 1 minus x squared. So now I know that the yellow side is equal to the following. I can label it as 1 minus x squared under the root symbol. So that's the yellow side. Once that is in place, now I can actually simplify this expression. Remember further that first of all, what's the purpose of the cosine inverse? To give us the angle. So in my triangle, I mark theta in that position where you see it right here. So theta is cosine inverse of x minus 1. That's what the cosine inverse, that's what the inverse trig functions give back to us, the angle. We don't know what the angle is, it doesn't matter. Next one. So I can now rewrite the original, which I'm going to call zero, if you like, step zero. <laughs> I'm going to call that now sine of two times theta. I'm replacing cosine inverse with theta, seven. From here, I'm going to apply a basic trig identity that says that sine of two theta is two sine theta cosine theta and now we can make use of our triangle to place sine theta and cosine theta remember the goal is we write in terms of x so no sines or cosines or angles so the two is a constant that stays and then for sine theta look at the triangle the sine theta will be the yellow side over the brown side so in our case it's simply going to be times the square root of 1 minus x squared over 1 just being very formal at first and then after that it's going to be the green side over the brown side, so that's going to be x over 1. Then we simplify that, so it looks a bit more clean. So it's going to be 2, move the x out front, and multiply by 1 minus x squared, just the way you see it. This is a 1 in that position. And one more bit to be mentioned is the following. Remember that the cosine inverse has this domain right here. Those are the values you're allowed to plug into the cosine inverse function. So sometimes this is mentioned for that reason. But also take a look. For example, imagine somebody doesn't believe that this right here represents a valid restriction. So what you can do is pretend for a second that x equals 2 and plug into what we got at step 8. Let's see what that gives us. So 2 times 2. The fact that I'm using 2 in this position is arbitrary. It's just a sample value to see what happens. I could have chosen 10. So I'm going to say 2 times 2. And then under the root symbol, 1 minus 2 squared. And I hope you see something interesting happening here, which is that this is 4. This part is 4, straight down, copied. But that is 1 minus 2 squared. So that's 1 minus 4, which is negative 3. And in the context of this level of trigonometry, you shouldn't have negatives under the square root. So that tells us the following. Go back to the top, right? This is the domain of cosine inverse like that so then if you try not to follow that domain when you get to step eight it's going to give you things that look like this which are in this context 
errors. <laughs> so this is what we are looking for. This is our solution. Let's be clear on that point right here that I've kind of just highlighted, okay? In light blue. So 2x times the square root of 1 minus x squared. Thanks so much for watching. Please leave a like. I'll see you in another video.